that you would like to share or maybe you have a question about the Bible here's an opportunity for you to share your request or get biblical answers stay tuned for a live call in program entitled prayer and answers and it is a wonderful Saturday afternoon welcome to prayer and answers I hope that you're having a beautiful Saturday and that all is well with your soul today uh, I know that we have something new going on at Escarity Park. There's a great big fair going on out there, I think, for the next week or so. Uh, but uh, I'm hoping that we still have some listeners, that they're not all out there riding the Ferris wheel. So uh, I think we'll be okay. What do you think, Steve? It's a nice day, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. For those of you that uh, may be listening for the first time, my name is Randy Smith. And I have the privilege of being the host of this program. And with me is my co-host, Dr. Steve Kovac. You heard his voice just a moment ago. I failed to ask, as I normally do. Steve, how are you today? Doing okay. All right, good. And it is a beautiful day out there. Saturday, let's, uh, wow, April 1st. No April Fool's jokes today, Steve. Thank you. All right. And uh, we're here to take your prayer request or any questions you might have on the scripture. The phone number here is 915-779-0016. And of course, as always, we have an open mic, whatever you want to talk about. Uh, if you, particularly if you have lost family members that you would like somebody to, to just lift up in prayer with you, give us a call with maybe health issues, maybe job issues or home issues, you give us a call. And Steve and I will uh, go to the Lord with you in prayer and our listeners will join in and uh, the Lord will hear and he will answer. So one more time, the phone number, 915-779-0016. And without further ado, we'll go to our first caller. Good afternoon, Minerva. Welcome to Prayer and Answers. Good afternoon. Um, pastors, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, I, When um, John the Baptist was baptizing um, Jesus, we heard the voice from heaven, which was God, and then him is... Um, of course, Jesus. And then when the dove came down, that signifies the Holy Spirit. So, yeah, I just one thing in the book of Mark and in the book of Luke, it gives you the indication that that was more of a sign for John the Baptist. We, it doesn't tell us for sure who all heard it. Okay. Um, John had been told as he was baptizing, that one day he was going to baptize somebody, and when he saw the spirit of Dove descending, that that was the Messiah. And so as John's there in the Jordan baptizing, he's just waiting. And when Jesus comes to get baptized and John baptizes him, John right. sees the spirit like a dove, and John hears the voice. And so John was able to proclaim the next day, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Okay, so it's not, it, but it's sort of, it's, okay, because I heard a pastor on KLP say that that's the first time we, the only time we see all three, the Trinity, um, and I never really thought of it, and I thought, is that what that signifies, or no? Well, it is a powerful passage of Scripture for the Trinity. Um, it is one that Trinitarians use um, all the time because there you do see all three acting in the same time. However, for those who are modalist, it doesn't satisfy them. So if a person wants to be wrong, no matter what you do, they're going to be wrong. Yeah. And, and then later, Jesus talks about how um, they had heard a testimony. They heard John's testimony, but he indicates that they had also heard that voice from heaven. Okay, so I'm just saying it in the baptism account, it we know for sure that John heard the voice and saw the dove, but we don't know if the others did. But we do know that, that there's another time when when uh, the voice of God comes out of heaven, when Jesus is but, being transfigured. But not all three. Because right. is that the only... Okay. Oh. It's, it's the first time in the Gospels that we see it. Um, now, I will tell you this. Uh, it was funny. I was talking to a United Pentecostal, um, and he, he was very frustrated with me. And he's going, but the Bible says there's one God. And I said, absolutely, there is only one God. 
<laughs> he goes, right. but you keep saying Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I go, absolutely, because that one God is three. And he goes, right. well, how can you have one and you have three? And I'm like, well, how can you have God? I mean, <laughs> how do you wrap your mind around it? And in frustration, he says to me, okay, so when you get to heaven then, you tell me right now, how many are you going to see? <laughs> and so I, I took him to the book of Revelation. Okay. And you have this host, you know, of elders and creatures around the, fo the throne, and they're worshiping one who's sitting on the throne. And I, I asked him, now, who is that? And he goes, well, that's God, the Father. And then I said, and then the next, very next chapter says, and then there's this one, the lamb is as if it's been slain. And I go, who is that? He goes, well, that's Jesus. And I go, now look at the next thing that happens. Jesus walks over to the throne and takes the scroll out of the hand of the Father. So I know for sure I'm going to at least see two of them. And he got more, he got more frustrated and said he'd have to call his pastor to find out what the answer to that was. <laughs> so... So, so that, that's what people who uh, are cultists do. When you're wrong, you're just wrong. Yeah, no, they have to. They they resort to. I have to go talk to somebody who knows yes. more than I do. Well, you know, you can read the Bible. Yeah. What does it say? Yeah. And and so I, it's kind of like they need permission. Yeah. But that is that is a powerful passage that you're looking at to show the Trinity right there. You see the three in one. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Pastor. You guys have yourself a great day, okay? Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good afternoon, Virginia. Thanks for calling in. Welcome to Pratt Answers. Let's hear your question. We've been saving for a week. Question. Yeah, what have you got? Let's hear it. Yeah, um, uh, my question was the sexualization of children. Oh, there we go. And, and, and if you notice, the incident in Nashville, yeah. they are turning it around to where that young lady is a victim. Yeah. And and, yep. and, and, and the reason that she did what she did is because um, 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 well, the, right now they are not uh, being sympathetic to the kids that may be uh, transgender right and they are depriving them right uh, so and, uh, and of course the Christians uh, so years ago how many years have been Steve you and I were kind of warning the church that it was before COVID that it was going to be the LBGT uh, community LBGTQ plus community that would actually be leading the persecution of Christians um, and uh, and you're, you're seeing that with this event. You have a pastor's nine-year-old daughter that's killed. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not the real tragedy. The tragedy is that somebody forced this transgender girl to go to a Christian school, and those Christians just molested her and taught her all kinds of bad things, and, and so uh, she was a victim, yeah. So I'm gonna have Steve answer the question on the sexualization of children. And then, um, and when you're saying that, are you talking about, when you say sexualization, are you talking about um, uh, changing sex? Are you talking about the drag issue where the kids uh, are going I, to? The, I guess both because right. they continue All right. and to then, bring in the, uh, the, the drag queens. Right. And then and after, then heard, after that, then I'll deal with the, um, that what you were talking about of, of them making her into the victim, okay? Yes. All right, yes. so Steve, there you go. Yeah. Okay, so wh when you were talking last week, Virginia, I heard you talk about why why does why does God allow this? Is that part of what you're asking? Yes, I believe yes. that the okay. Lord is, is is allowing it. Yes. So let me can I address let me address that in a, in a very general way. So um, why why does God allow evil? Uh, and um, so there are two two general answers to that question. Then I'll get to the other part if we have time. So uh, the first uh, reason that God allows evil uh, is um, that evil is uh, the absence of good. So when God created, he created uh, Adam and Eve, and he, g he gave them uh, two trees. And one the tree of the knowledge of, 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 of good and evil and the tree of life. And so the question is, 
what is that tree of the knowledge of good and evil doing there? It, it's there because God said you can eat of every tree except for this one. And so he, he created, the, when he created Adam and Eve, he created them with a choice. And they could choose to disobey God. And so the general idea, to make a very long story short, is God uh, gives everyone a choice. And so evil then happens because people have free will and they choose to disobey God and evil happens as a result of all the sin that happens in the world. And so that's called the free will answer or the theodicy, which is the explanation for God, why God allows evil. The other answer to the question is God allows evil or, or even sometimes uh, is part of the process of it uh, to teach us something. To, to build our character, to, to, to help develop us as, and, 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 and deal with uh, the, the difficulties of life. And so um, that's called the soul-making uh, answer or the soul-making theodicy. And so those are the two general answers why God allows these things. Now, to get to the sexualization of the children, um, um, <clears throat> so God has, has allowed our culture um, to become so depraved um, that they that, that they cannot even recognize what reality is, and so they don't even understand the distinction between male and female. They don't understand how we're designed as male and female. They don't recognize the role of God in creating us as male and female. And, and so, as part of the sexualization of our culture that God is allowing to happen uh, in our society, uh, people are. Uh, not satisfied with just committing sexual acts, they're 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 per perverting the genders, and saying that my gender is not really my gender, and my gender is whatever I decide to be, and they use that along with the sexual uh, aspect of it. So um, that's that's a general answer to that question. Um, let me uh, let me pose a question to you, Virginia. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you, does this trouble you because you're like, God, why won't you just come and clean this up? Is that kind of what's on your mind? Is it like um, you, you long for God to come and just put an end to this stuff? Well, it would be nice if he did, but I do not know what his overall plan is. But okay, so but I that's think, I think she must have a purpose. If, uh, yeah, so that's if what happens. that's what I want to talk to you about because I'd like for you to have some peace on these things, okay? And 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 I know these things bother you, and they bother so many people. Whenever we see an injustice or we see something evil taking place, we're like. If I may add, if I may add mm -hmm. something, I wonder if, for example, you have heard of this dad? He's he's from Texas. And he and his wife parted ways, and uh, they had uh, twin boys. And uh, the mom has told one of the uh, twins, he's not a boy, that he's a girl. Right, right. So, and and and, and, and he dresses, she dresses him right like a girl. And then before she moved to California, you know, a very little state, he said, well, you know, when he visits with me, we, we do boy kinds of things. Right. You know, hunting, fishing, and whatever. And then his son uh, said that he told the mom, I don't want to be a girl anymore. And his mom's response was, well, then I can't love you. Right. And so, so, uh, so what is a young child to think? Right. You know? All right. So first of all, I want to deal with your thinking. And then you and I together can, can help with the rest of it, okay? So this is the reality. This, this is just the universe that we live in. God is not the source of evil, okay? But there is a demonic person named Satan, and he has a host of demons that, that influence humanity and lead them away from God. And it is, that, it is Satan's joy and delight. He laughs at us going, well, there's a hundred genders. And he likes, yes, I've won. So this world has a, has a ruler over it that is vile and wicked in every way. I always, I, I always get puzzled when people are going, what's wrong with God? How come he let this happen? Well, wait a minute. First of all, 
why aren't we blaming the guy who's doing it? Um, and then the second thing is humans, mankind, partner with Satan in doing the deeds of evil. What Steve was quoting to you was out of Romans chapter 1, and what it says there is what, what you're seeing take place is God's judgment. The judgment of God is not a hurricane or an earthquake or, you know, a, a meteor striking the earth. The gut judgment of God is he just leaves us in our futile thinking, in our foolishness, and, and steps back. And so the world that you live in is a very vile place. And it does cause us to grieve, and we want to see justice. But what God is doing, in, he's not saving this world, Virginia. He's reaching into this world and saving some whoever wants to. He saves them out of this world. And he is go the way that he's going to fix all of this is he is going to burn this place with fire till there's nothing left. And he is going to put an end to it. But do you know why he didn't, why he's not stopping things right now? Because my brother is still lost and he wants to give him another year to come to repentance. And that's how we have to look at it. There is a condemned sign on this world already. God has stamped it condemned, and he's warning everybody, flee. And you're not going to see goodness and righteousness here except in God's people. So then, then what do we do in, in view of that? We're looking for the Lord's return because he's going to come and put an end to all of this. But the way he puts an end to it is all of the evil do doers are going to be placed in hell and he's going to destroy everything and then there's going to be a new world with just you and me and the believers in jesus and god okay so what do well, we well what, i do know that the, the world that we see is not the world that the lord created no it's fallen but who made it fall we did and who makes it fall more we do who started the wars who started the war in ukraine it wasn't god it was a guy named putin and the vile demonic force behind him. And so you and I, what God is telling us to do is he's saying, you know, step over here, step out of this world. You're not to be, you're not to be a part of this world. You're in it, but you're not a part. And work with me as I try to save individuals out of a fallen world. And that's why he tells Peter, when he calls Peter, he says, I'll make you fishers of men. And that's what you and I are supposed to be, Virginia. Don't get, don't get frustrated trying to fix the world. Get busy trying to save someone out of it. It's almost like if I was a lifeguard and I saw somebody drowning in the water, am I going to go drain the swimming pool? <laughs> or am I going to jump in and pull them out? You can't drain the pool, can you, Virginia? No, I can't. Just start saving people. Just tell them about your God, okay? Well, you know, I, I pray for that uh, young man and for others in a situation like that because... But you understand yeah, yeah, only salvation yeah, yeah. can fix them. You've, so you keep praying for them. You keep praying for them. And then every opportunity you get to tell somebody to run out of this world, you tell them, okay? Tell them to run to Jesus. All right. Yeah, and and then the line that that some of these young people get, like one girl that came before Congress, she went to to a counselor, and the counselor said, "Well, if you don't allow her to become transgender, then she will kill herself." So then the parents thought, "Well, okay, I guess that's what we do." I I, I know yeah. Virginia. All you, we're just saying the same thing. This place is horrible, and it's insane. Mm -hmm. You're living in an insane asylum, so what do you expect? Insanity. But but we're not of this world, okay? No, no we're not. Okay, so you, you no, put your eyes I, on Jesus, and don't worry about all these crazy people. All right? See, well, we have to teach them. In Virginia, so what we have to do is teach them what, what, what reality is. And, and, and so uh, the, the girl who... The high suicide rate it occurs because she has a mental illness. So it's called gender dysphoria, and the mental illness is causing her to commit suicide. Um, but the, the the cure for it is to teach them um, who they really are, 
so, and so, and so not to not to allow it to happen. So Virginia, in real life, how do I deal with this? I don't try to talk to the girl at Congress, but I do have children in a Christian school here that I meet with and talk to them and tell them about God. Do you see? Let, yeah. let the lost the lost are lost. Let the dead bury the dead. And and you and I in the area where we can be effective get busy. Yeah. Okay. Well, in, in, instead of you know like that counselor uh, told that girl, I think the ones that are more likely to kill themselves is when they find that their bodies have been mutilated yeah. and they're not what they were told yeah. that they were. Either way, they <laughs> end up killing themselves, and that counselor is going to go to hell for what she's doing. Yeah. She's she's going to pay for it. Okay, because no, Jesus agree. said it would be better to have a millstone tied around your neck and thrown into the ocean than to cause harm to one of these little ones. Think of the mm -hmm. penalty she, you are going to get justice, Virginia. She is going to spend eternity in hell, that counselor, okay? Okay. I mean, okay, yeah. it's okay that she spends her time in hell? Well, if she chooses there to, you go. Okay. To, to, to not repent and yeah. to stop doing the wrong thing, yeah, there's, I, there's a, a I wish I could. I wish I could talk to her and tell her her danger. You know. Anyway, thank you very much okay. for the call, Virginia. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. We've got a couple other phone calls coming in, and so give me just a second here. Good afternoon, Ray. Welcome to Prayer and Answers. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. Sounds good. All right, my prayer is uh, that uh, things going on with my mom and family uh, be uh, be taken care of by the Lord. I'm no, just... wait, 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 wait. Let's slow down a minute here, Ray. Hang on, you're missing something. <laughs> you called in to this radio show. Steve's got a notepad right here, and if I flip back in the pages, I'm going to find it where you okay. called into this show right here and you said I wish you guys would pray for Junior. Do you remember that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And is Junior getting baptized tomorrow? Shh. It's a secret. Huh? So it's a was secret. was your prayer answered? Yeah. Well, that before we start praying for your mom, can we take <laughs> a minute to give thanks for Junior? Well, yeah. Okay. No, 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 there's not no, well, yeah, it's like, <laughs> Junior's uh, accepted the Lord and position is secure, and and he's doing it in spite of opposition and in spite yep. of some persecution that he's going to receive because of his declaration of faith in Jesus Christ. Yep. So we need to give thanks to God for what God's done, but we also need to pray, first of all, you know, that God will strengthen Junior and protect him, right? Mm, yes. Okay, Junior is uh, Ray's stepson, Steve. Okay. And so, and Ray has called in more than once and asked us to pray for yes. Junior. Yes. And for Michael also, and Michael still hasn't come. But anyway, would you give, would you just help us to pray for Junior? Sure. And so, Lord, thank you for, for you. You were working in, in the ways that you work. You work in people's hearts and minds. Uh, you work uh, as as people uh, make requests of you and and uh, work in the heavenly places to to help people uh, in the, in their hearts and minds to see and understand things. And we thank you that Junior has understood who you are, uh, not just uh, in in his mo in his. Uh, logic but in his mind and heart and that you have brought him to faith and that you are you are you have transformed him and now we pray lord that you would grow him into your likeness as he continues to walk with you and he grows in your grace and in your knowledge as he adds to his faith so lord as he as he gets baptized tomorrow help him to remember the significance of what he's doing and why he's doing it and what it means that he's identifying his life with Christ and Christ has become his life. And so Lord help him as he deals with all the difficulties and persecutions and the things that lie ahead of him that if Christ is our life um, nothing can separate us from his love 
and once we are in Christ, um, he gives us the capacity and, and, and the grace to grow and to, to withstand the tempter and all the difficulties that lie ahead. So thank you, Lord, for Junior. We pray for your work in his life. And we thank for Ray and, and uh, all the people who have worked with Junior and pray that that would be an encouragement as well. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And now, is Dora listening today, Ray? I, I think so. I know I'm at the church listening. No, oh, because I was going to say, if, if she's not listening, it'll still be a surprise to her. <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> anyway, now we're ready for new business. The, all right, okay, the, the prayer line is open for new business. What is it? Okay, uh, look out for my, uh, my. okay, well, check it out. Uh, my oldest brother is uh, coming back into the picture. Uh, I'll take care of my mom. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's been, we've been estranged for, I don't know, six years now, seven years. Mm -hmm. But it seems to be uh, he's coming back on uh on good terms, uh, he's, he's suffering from long COVID, but he's, uh, we'll find out. Uh, we'll find out Monday what's going on. But it's uh, him and him and my other brother Larry uh, used to be at were at odds, and now they're they seem to be amicable. So it's it's good. And and it's both good. of both of your older brothers are lost, Ray. Yeah. All right. So that maybe maybe that's why they're so amicable. <laughs> which leaves you odd man out doesn't it so, yeah alright so we're going to pray for you but just one of the things I want you to keep your eye on the ball okay um, it's not the, 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 the desire is not for there to be peace in this situation or that just you know that your mom is taken care of but the big, the big picture is that your brothers can receive Christ you know, they can, they're and, it, come off. and they may be mean to you at times and you may pay the price but it's in martyrdom so many times that people finally come to know the Lord um, when Bonhoeffer was put in the concentration camps by by Hitler as the guards in that camp saw Bonhoeffer ministering to everybody there sharing his food and the peace and everything that he had as he was being persecuted when they finally hung Bonhoeffer the prison guards gave their lives to Jesus saying now there we have seen a true Christian so you're going to be Bonhoeffer okay oh, okay you're okay with that okay I'll come cut you down <laughs> okay I'm going to pray but that's the big picture right Ray Okay. Yeah, we'll come cut you down, and and then I'll meet you in heaven. <laughs> okay. I'll be at the fishing hole with David. All right, let me pray for you. Oh, Father, we were just talking about my brother being lost, and Ray's two older brothers are lost as well. And it's, if something doesn't change, we know what their destiny is. And, Lord, they're not very nice people. And now... Ray is uh, the youngest and going to be there uh, between these two very not nice people and trying to take care of his mother and so I pray for strength, wisdom, the patience of Job, gentleness, faithfulness in Ray. I pray that his brothers will see wisdom and discernment and see your joy in Ray's life and they would be confounded and perhaps turn to you. We need a miracle, Lord. Uh, for them too, just like every salvation is. But we know that time is getting short, and so I pray for their salvation. And I pray for strength for Ray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank okay, you. God bless you, Ray. Okay, God bless you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, Kenny, we need to take a break. I haven't got to hardly sip on my coffee here. So let's take a break. Let me go. Um, would you give the phone numbers out, Steve? And then we'll be back in a moment with prayer and answers. 915-779-0016. Weekend Magazine, KELP. This is John MacArthur with another edition of Portraits of Grace. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, 
but believe in Him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. That wonderful verse expresses the wonder of our fellowship with Christ. Even though we don't see Him, we enjoy fellowship with Him that could be only built on love, trust, and obedience. Enjoying fellowship with Christ is one of the supreme privileges of your Christian life. Strengthen and enrich that fellowship by learning from His Word and relying on His Spirit. As you do, you'll learn to love and trust Christ more deeply and to obey all His commands. What a privilege. This is John MacArthur looking forward to bringing you more Portraits of Grace. Next time on Focus on the Family Radio Theater, the war and children evacuated from London come to C.S. Lewis in Oxford. All right, everyone, into the air raid shelter, in the garden, let's go. And James Welch at the BBC's religious department faces a new challenge. Members of Parliament are complaining to me directly. Discover the unfolding true story behind C.S. Lewis's mere Christianity on the next Focus on the Family Radio Theater. I was facing foreclosure, and they guaranteed they would get my loan modified. I paid them a fee and never heard from them again. Anyone can be a victim of a loan modification scam, but you don't have to be. Know the signs. Get the facts. Visit www.loanscamalert.org. For trusted government-approved help and to report a scam, call 1-888-995-HOPE. That's 1-888-995-4673. And we are back with more prayer and answers. We don't have uh, any calls right now. We're looking for prayer requests or any Bible questions you might have. The phone number here is 915-779-0016. And uh, we have uh, an open line policy meeting. We can talk about whatever whatever you want to talk about. Um, you know, uh, Steve, I was noticing uh, here, uh, I don't know, I think it was just about the time that COVID was going, or maybe it was a midstream of COVID, and I, I, was, I would start watching uh, network news at night. And as I was watching the network news, uh, I was getting pretty riled up because I was going, wow, it's over. You know, it was when the Ukraine war was starting. And uh, it didn't get over. It's still going over a year now yeah, over a year not just the war i mean the way the news had it when you looked at the weather when you looked at what was going on in politics when you looked at what was going on with china and with ukraine and syria it's over there's just no hope and and yet every morning i would wake up and there was no mushroom clouds and uh, I, w I was like what you know what is going on and so i started paying close attention to what the news was doing because every night for 30 minutes there's a crisis, and uh, uh, and the and the world is over. And I noticed even you know the background music that's in the back is this music that kind of has this you know warning type of a of a of a sound to it, and the way that the the news person is talking. And I realize they have to sell commercials, <laughs> and so they've got to make this where you're going to tune in every night. You know, well, what is the next catastrophe that's going to happen? And uh, and every single night they come on with the war is over. I mean, the world is over. That's it. You know, California is either going to fall off because of an earthquake or fall off, get, get washed away, or it's going to get dried up. And, and, uh, and I, I know I see the horrible tornadoes and stuff. I see all of this stuff. And you can you can see the the trouble that is there, but they amp it up so much. And then you go to talk radio, and you can listen to six straight hours. You can listen to three hours of uh, of what used to be Rush Limbaugh's show, and then right after that, Sean Hannity. And they're just pounding on the the um, the inequity the the. the how the system is is being weaponized and there's no justice here and and everything and i realize you know they're selling commercials too and if we listen to those things we get amped up too yeah and we and we quit doing what we're supposed to be doing we just get inundated we actually get transformed by what we're hearing coming in yeah and so we need to be careful 
that we're not listening to the world. Yeah. So one of the things that uh, we we need to limit our 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 intake. I, and and so it's not that we shouldn't be informed. We absolutely should be. Yeah. But we need to have a filter. Yes. And and that filter should be discernment. Yeah. As well as not being barraged with it over and over again, so it just becomes that's the only thing that could yeah. be right, or maybe that's the only 30, thing to think about. Maybe thirty minutes a day is enough. Because you hear the same story over and over and over, and. We have to sensationalize every one of those stories. I mean, they're bad enough as they are, but now we need to amplify them to make them even worse. So I had gotten into the habit a few years ago, and I got away from it. I need to go back to it. When I wake up in the morning, uh, um, just on my telephone, I can do one swipe to the left, and right there they'll have headline news. And I look to see if... If buildings aren't falling in New York, okay, the world's still going. You know, I, now let me go get my Bible and spend time in prayer. You know, I, d I don't need to, to put on a, a nuclear protective gear right now. Um, and, then, and then other than that, just leave it alone. Yeah, and a lot of it, you know, happened before COVID. But what COVID did is, 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 is politicians, particularly of some stripes, want to create crises. Yes. In, in order for them to become more dependent on on them. Use fear. And so use fear to create yeah. crises. So everything's a crisis. We have a climate crisis. Yeah. We yeah. have we have a war crisis. We have a um a transgender thing and so uh, just to get back to that, the the transgenders we're going to have a day of vengeance mm. that was actually supposed to be today mm. before this murder happened in Nashville. Mm. And there was such an outcry. They thought maybe they should. Uh, the, the, they were actually talking about vengeance mm. and talking about killing people and and uh, and But it's okay havoc. if they do it, that would be okay because... Yes, course, but, but the, there was some, because of the murders, they, I th decided, not they decided not to do it because the, the, the publicity was getting yeah. much more negative for them. Uh, they're still hateful. It's still, you got to remember, they're, they're, they're still hateful because they feel like they're entitled yeah. uh, to, to be uh, whatever gender they want to <laughs> be. And you have to, you have to celebrate it. You can't just say, I disagree with you. You're not allowed to disagree. Yeah. You have to celebrate it. And if you don't celebrate it, then we're going to cancel you or yeah, when, do something when else. We, when we think about, you know, their position of being a victim. So I've got, you, lo you look at the tornadoes that went through the South. You look at what's going on in Ukraine and entire cities turned to rubble. And these people, what their complaint is, is somebody didn't use the right pronoun. <laughs> they're, they're so abused because you didn't say they, them. And they didn't, and they don't celebrate, and we don't celebrate the yes. fact that they, they are what they want to be. And, and meanwhile, they have a roof over their head, they have plenty to eat, they've got cars that they drive in, they're protected by, by a constitution that protects their free speech. And it's just, again, when you, you know what, why don't you go ahead, would you just turn in the Bible to Romans chapter 1. Now this news report that, that Steve's getting ready to read, this is a news report that's a couple of thousand years old. <laughs> But just in, yeah. <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> and so um, there's, where, there's... Where would you like me to start? Verse uh, 18? Yeah, anywhere there. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. And, but uh, folks, I want you to listen. I want you to listen to this. As if, as if Steve um, were a news reporter. All right? Go ahead, Steve. Go ahead and read this. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Now, For wait, whose wrath is revealed? God. Well, then I guess I don't need to get in there, right? I, I don't need to go start slapping anybody. Cause, no, no. It's, okay, God, God, is, God's, God is, got this. God's okay, going to handle it. All right, okay. It. God will handle it. All right, well, then I guess I'll do something else. All right, okay. go ahead. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. All right, so they now, actually— who is it, Now, who is it he's showing it to? Everybody. Yeah. 
the, the, and so it's being revealed, yeah. and he's showing them something. So what is he showing them? For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since uh, the, the creation of the world. So how long has that been going on? What, that, that's since human beings were created. I, I want to pause you for a moment. Yes. I was just thinking about something. I saw, um, I can't remember which movie star. Oh, it was Ellen DeGeneres standing by a raging uh, river in California, and she was going, look, this is because of climate change. Mother Nature is angry with us. And meanwhile, when I watch the news, I get a whole other picture. I look at my wife and go, I don't think God likes California right now. <laughs> it's not, it's not well, it's Mother either. Nature that's wrath. Yeah. <laughs> it's you know, so it's God's hard, it's, wrath. Yeah, and so it's hard to say exactly that, that this is God is causing this because of, of judgment on California, but it is highly unusual that it has years of drought followed by a very long period of, of flooding. Now, and I'm just going with this recent news report that you're reading. The wrath of God is being revealed against man. <laughs> Right. Okay. Since the creation of the world, so it's, not, so it's always it's, yes. And so it's not a it's not a recent news report. So when you when you look at wars, when you look at this, and you, you know, okay, what what is this? You know, well, since the creation of the world, this has been going on. Yes, in the thi- and so since the creation of the world, and the things that have been made, that that this wrath of God, so they are without excuse. For although they knew God, that it means everybody. They did not know him. They did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. I heard a, an atheist, and I, it's a very famous man. I can't remember who it was. And he was being asked by a, by a news moderator. He was going, so you're an atheist. So uh, if you do suddenly find yourself facing God at the end of time, then this was a secular news thing, you know, doing an interview on this atheist. If you do find yourself at the end of time facing God, you know, what will you say to him? And the atheist said, I'll tell him. You didn't give me enough evidence. You didn't, who was it? Do you remember? Bertrand Russell. Bertrand Russell. You didn't give me enough evidence. What's Romans chapter 1 say, though? He goes, he, every, every everybody time, has the evidence. Every time you looked at the, the sky at night, yes. it screamed. Yes, God and, is. and then Romans chapter two tells that you have a conscience that everybody inside has. of you, you know, that every atheist, even an ag- agnostic, when they say, I'm not sure, I just go, you're lying to yourself. You are sure. You know, absolutely certain that there is a God. Yeah. No, but what they do, claiming to be wise, they become fools and exchange the glory of God for a mortal uh, the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and 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 the birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them over to the lusts of their hearts okay, to let me, impurity. Let me pause you for a moment then. Would you say that most of the people in the House of Representatives and in the Senate and in the White House, would you say most of them are devout Christians seeking God, glorifying God, and seeking God's will? No. Okay. What percentage would you say? Just uh, guess. Uh, three. Three yeah. percent? Okay. Well, I'll be, I'll be generous and go five. That means 95 percent of the people who are running our country are, are the Romans chapter one people. Now, consider this. We call this a Christian country. What about the rest of the world then? What percentage of the people in government around the world, United Nations, whatever, do you think are God seekers honoring God and trying to lead the world to a closer relationship with God? One percent. Okay, let's say it's one percent. Hallelujah. And, and, I, and I, I pray for that one percent. So why would anybody be surprised when the decisions that people are making in power are stupid? I mean, why would, or evil or opposed to God? Why are we going, I just can't believe this is happening when the vast majority of those in power are fools who are de- denying truth and even lie to themselves. So because they claim uh, they, they they claim they 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 for although they knew God they did not honor him and claiming to be wise they became fools. So how should we? Now that's that's the tr- and by the way if Christians don't get this that this is the world they live in 
they're almost as foolish as these people because or a transgender person because they're going well you know what i just don't accept that as truth but there it is right there in romans the world is a lost place and lost people by definition are fools and fools are running the world so what did you expect that's right, and they exchanged the glory of, of the, the immortal God for images resembling mortal men and birds and animals and creeping things and material items, if I could add that. And next he goes into, and they became the LBGTQ community. No, it just says God gave them over Keep to going. their foolishness, Keep to going. the lusts. To what? To the lusts of their hearts, to impurity to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. And keep going. Because um, they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. And, and Amen. Keep going just a little bit further. We'll see the rainbow flag here. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. Mm. For their women exchanged mm. natural relations. Mm. There's the, there's the gay pride flag of Romans chapter 1. And this was written 2,000 years ago. And he's saying this has been going on since creation. That's right. For, for those uh, th things that are, and, and then he says, those things are contrary to nature. So what, he do, what we have, first of all, is a person says, I don't think there is a God, or they deny the one true God and worship some false God. And in judgment, God turns them over to foolishness. And the next thing that happens is you end up with all of this sexual immorality and gender confusion and everything else that goes with it. Well, let's not be discriminatory. And men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passions for one another. Men committing themselves with men and receiving in, the, in their themselves the due penalty for their and error yes. or a better translation perversion perversion so that's the gay part that's the g of lbgq the l part is the first part that you read the lesbianism right okay and since they did not fe see fit to acknowledge god god gave them up to a debased mind to do what what ought not to be done so consider how god does this first of all they just don't give him his due they don't come to him and acknowledge him as the creator and so in judgment he gives them over to their passions and then they become all confused in gender and they become all confused in in what sex they're supposed to have and in response to that he brings another judgment and he turns them over now he leaves them to their debased mind and they become almost like animals. Because they're filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. So what type of person do you think that is? And that's the vast majority of humanity. Those are the ones that want the days of vengeance. Yes, so we should not be surprised that the world is the way that it is. What are we supposed to do as we live next to those people? What are we supposed to do? First, you, you ought to give just incredible thanks to God that he saved you because you, you were just like them. Paul says later in the next chapter, he goes, in fact, read chapter 2, verse 1. Look at what Paul says. Therefore, you have no excuse, O man, every one of you who judges, for in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself ah, because you, the judge, practice the very same things. Here, Paul is talking to the moralist. He's talking to the one that would go, well, I don't do that. Look at those LBGTQ people. I, look at that. I'm not doing that. Well, but you know what? What Paul says in Romans chapter 2, verse 1 is, you're just as guilty. Why? Well, because you're also not giving your life to God. You're living for food. You're living for, for, for uh, you know, a claim at work. You're living for a better house. You're, you're just as foolish. Or, or you're using religion think that, thinking that that's going to get you into heaven, that if you'll be good, you'll get into heaven. You are just as foolish as the, as the atheist. Uh, do, do you realize what a miracle it is that you and I ever found Christ? It's, yes. it's called a remnant for a reason. The vast majority of humanity is in that lost condition. But what are we supposed, as believers, what are we supposed to do about it? 
We are to have our eyes fixed upon heaven because we're going there. And for every day that we're here, we're supposed to be serving the Lord and trying to reflect his truth and his beauty. And we are to declare truth into that environment. Then if you speak truth about Jesus to those people, do you think you're going to have rocks thrown at you? I would think so. And then you can't go, hey, how come people are throwing rocks at me? You know, I, when you became a believer in Jesus Christ, folks, you, you became a citizen of the kingdom of God, and that kingdom is at war. Could you imagine if, if, if the guy in Ukraine, you know, he's there in the foxhole, he's, he's new on the, on the battlefield, and, 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 and he's in back boot, and all of a sudden somebody shoots at him. Does he go, hey, what, what did I do? Why are you guys shooting at me? <laughs> You're in war. We would be foolish to not recognize that we are in a combat zone, and it's a war between God and Satan, and we're on the front lines. Yes, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities and authorities and the rulers of this dark world and the spiritual forces of evil so that in the says, heavenly realm. That says our struggle. The first words there, our struggle. How foolish would we as Christians be if we thought we weren't in the struggle? Sometimes I say it's, it's almost like the church today in the West. They're decorating their foxholes. You know, let me, well, let me hang a Rembrandt here, and I want to get a Tesla over here in this part of my foxhole, and it's a foxhole. <laughs> it's not your permanent residence. It's a place of shelter that you shoot back from. And so um, I, I, I would just ask people to check, check on reality, make sure they understand where they're living. Yep. This is not heaven. Yep. So First Corinthians says, such were some of you. Uh, me? Yeah. And me. And, but you were washed. Absolutely. You were sanctified. And how did that happen? Because he, yeah. had, he had grace. And, and there's the Bible, Romans, also in that, in that first chapter, that's why Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of God, because there is a power there. The yeah. gospel is so powerful that once in a while it speaks into the absolute most militant uh, uh, um, gay pla- flag waver. And the gospel cuts through everything and touches the heart. And that person is, is brought from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. But the, and those verses are right before where, where I started, that the wrath of God is being revealed against all unrighteousness because it's the power of God for everyone who believes. Uh, the righteousness of God is revealed yes. through faith. So, and but the wrath of God is revealed against all unrighteousness, but the righteousness of God is revealed through yes. faith in Jesus. So, should I outlaw um, uh, those who are sexually immoral? Should I should I uh, count them as my enemy and try to take them off the face of the earth? No, I should find some way to speak the gospel to them in gentleness and love, and then get ready to get hit <laughs> because nine out of ten are going to strike because they hate it. But there's the one, and, and that one may be one of y'all's daughters or sons. How, how would you want me to treat your daughter or son? You would want me to share the gospel. Well, are you sharing the gospel to somebody else's daughter or son? Instead of getting caught up in, uh, in, in, in being frustrated in the condition of the world, recognize we just read this to you from 2,000 years ago. Nothing has changed. Things get worse, and they just get worse, and they get worse as we get towards the end of the age, or if God sends a revival and he turns it around. So so, so what, what, what we're supposed to do is, is create what, what is called a uh, create distance uh, between how we live and how the world lives. Yes. And, and because we're to act as aliens and strangers. Right. And to expect, as First Peter 4 says, uh, that when you don't participate with them in their unrighteousness, um, they have more specific language than that, they will malign you. Hmm. They will abuse you. Yes. And don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. And, and when they do it, what does Jesus say? You should rejoice for great is your reward yeah. in heaven. And you know where we can create that distance? In the church. It can be the place where, where that's where, where our distance, holiness and righteousness can be seen. That's where our distance can be established so we can live in the world, yeah. and, but not of the world. And why did that person go in and shoot up the church? 
because they, they had done that. They stood for truth. And if we bring this full circle, how can we as Christians then be able to stand against such opposition? How can we as Christians, as individuals in our workplace, it's a little bit easier in the church, but in our workplace, how can we, how can we stand there and, and people can see Christ in us even when we're being hit and us not respond in, in an inappropriate fashion? Well, it brings us full circle. Shut off the news media and start abiding in Christ by more time in the Bible, by more time in prayer, and what will happen is you'll start to have the fruit of the Spirit ex- exuding from you. You will just become a person who by nature is loving and has joy and peace and patience and goodness and kindness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control. In a word, you'll start to have the same characteristics of Jesus Christ himself, and you will be able to stand against the assaults of the enemy. And, and guess what? That's what your God calls you to do. So, folks, can we get at it? Can we just, can we stop fussing at the world and, and, and thinking about their business and start getting busy with our business of abiding in Christ and uh, being filled with his spirit? So you like to cite the, the fruit of the spirit. I like to cite uh, Jesus teaching uh, uh, that a good tree uh, bears good fruit, a bad tree bears bear, bad fruit from the overflow of our heart. Our, our life speaks. In other words, we, we will bear it because it's part of who we are in our hearts. Um, uh, and, and part of that has been caused uh, by abiding in Christ. If you abide in me and if my word abides in you, ask whatever you wish, it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you may bear much, much fruit. So get this mental picture real quick, okay? Let's say that we went over to the water treatment plant over here, and uh, they've got all of this, uh, you know, they've got all of this water pressure on a fire hydrant there, and it's the water, it's the sewage plant. And I go over there, and I open my mouth wide in front of that fire hydrant, and then I pull the, the lever so that all of that garbage, that nasty stuff, is shooting down my throat. I'm going to be a fairly polluted person, and yet we think nothing of turning the fire hydrant of the media on and listening to all of the things of the world, and yet not a drop do we take from the spring of living water of Jesus Christ. Church, we need to, uh, we need to get serious about this. So there's your sermon. It's been a while since we had one. And that's it for this edition of Prayer and Answers. If the Lord does tarry, then we will see you next week. God bless. Thank you for listening to Prayer and Answers presented each Saturday afternoon at 1.30. Tune in again next week at the same time for Prayer and Answers. Jesus is the way.